in this debate this evening on the floor of this house let me remind my colleague honorable members that under article 95 of the constitution this house has got three very key responsibilities uh, one of which under article 95 one uh, we represent the people of the constituencies under article 95 2 we deliberate on and resolve issues of concern to those people and under article 95 3 we enact legislation honorable speaker the issues that are being conversed or the issues that will be conversed at the national dialogue committee are issues of concern to the people who we represent under article 95 sub article 1 of the constitution and it's also true as has been eloquently put by honorable chungwa that whatever comes out of those talks is likely to find its way to the floor of this house in one form or another and therefore we shall be enacting legislation with regard to the outcome of those talks so and therefore this house is in its right place to seize of this matter at this early stage honorable speaker it is a fact that elections were conducted in august 2022 Honorable Speaker, it's also a fact that nearly one year since then, the country is still gripped by a state of anxiety and unease. And yet we know that we need peace and stability. That peace and stability are, are a prerequisite to sustainable development. No investor, be it local or foreign, can comfortably invest their money in an environment of instability, in an environment of chaos, in an environment of anxiety, or in an environment which is unpredictable. And that's why it behoves all of us whether you are in government or you are not in government that we create a we shall also recall the bipartisan spirit that guided the debate on the 2010 constitution and its eventual enactment by this house and adoption by the people and we can go on and on that at such times the only way out has been through bipartisan engagement and in a spirit of give and take where no one claims to be right and no one is deemed to be wrong and we can also talk about the IPBG of 1997 in 1997 when we had a crisis in this country I remember very vividly just a few months before elections of that year during the clamor of no reforms, no election it the IPPG to midwife a settlement in the form of the constitution of the Electoral Commission then. Mr. Speaker, elections has proved to be one of the single largest causes of instability not only in Africa but the entire world. Elections their conduct and outcome and we can't bury our heads in the sand that that we live in some island no we are not immune to those problems that have engulfed countries some more powerful than us around the world as a result of elections the speaker the speaker you will recall i'm sure a few examples Take, for instance, the case of Uganda in 1980, when elections results were disputed. Elections that pitted the then UPC, I think Uganda People's Congress, led by President Obote, 
who had just come from exile, from a thing that was exile in Tanzania. He was brought in, and President Paul Mwanga, who had just been power for about two months or so, gave him way to lead the UPC in that election, which was also contested by President Yoweri Museveni under the Uganda Patriotic Movement banner. The outcome of the election was heavily contested, and it led to a five-year civil war that cost more than half a million Ugandans' lives. Until the NRA took over power in January 1986. You can also talk of the situation in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, in the year 2010, when President Loro Babu clung to power and was holed up in his bunker, even having been declared a loser in that election. And, and Mr. Arasen Achara, who was declared the winner, was holed up in the Gulf Hotel in Abujan, trying to run the government from a hotel room. When Baghdad Bagu refused to cede power, he took the efforts of the French army and the ECOWAS to flash out Babu and send him to the ICC. By the time he went to the ICC, thousands of Ivorians had lost their lives. You will recall. I don't want to talk about the, Ugand the, the Rwandan situation. You know very well what happened in 1994 when President Habyarimana's plane was shot down and he died together with the President of Burundi. What followed was genocide that cost about nine, one million lives of Rwandese. Mr. Speaker, recently, even in the mightiest of our democracies, the USA, you saw what happened in January 2021. January 6th. January 6th. Yes. When members of the Proud, Bo Proud Boy movement, okay, a right wing militia, stormed the Capitol Hill and took it over. I'm told they are being charged now, they are in court including the former president, Donald Trump. So no country is immune to civil strife. No country is immune to instability.